Before Carlo Gambino, before Albert Anastasia, there was the Diaguila crime family. From the old country to America. Salvatore Di Aguila was born in November 1877 in Palermo, Sicily. He later immigrated to America in 1906 at the age of 29. Prior to leaving Sicily, it is rumored that Di Aquila was already involved in organized crime and was known as a man of respect throughout the criminal underworld. When Di Aquila arrived in New York, he began working with other Sicilians importing cheese and other goods. It wasn't long before he decided to use his connections with the Sicilian underworld to begin a life of crime here in the States. The Morello Crime Family and a Rise to Prominence Early on, Di Aquila joined with New York boss Giuseppe the Clutch Hand Morello, who at the time ran the most powerful organized crime syndicate in the country. As a capo for Morello, he moved to Brooklyn and established a power base there for the family. Di Aquila was a top confidence man for the Morello family and in 1906 was arrested on related charges. He was soon released and it is suspected that his boss, Giuseppe Morello, had arranged for the charges to be dropped. Then in 1910, Morello boss Giuseppe the Clutch Hand Morello and his underboss Ignazio the Wolf Lupo were arrested and imprisoned on counterfeiting charges, leaving a power vacuum in the New York City underworld. Sensing weakness in his current organization, Di Aquila took the unprecedented step of separating from the Morellos and forming his own crime family. New Beginnings and the Formation of the Di Aquila Crime Family Along with Di Aquila, a number of mafiosos defected to join his new organization. Prominent members of the newly formed Di Aquila family included Umberto Valenti, Manfredi Mino, Giuseppe Trena, and Frank Scalise. With their help, the Di Aquila family exerted influence in East Harlem, Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Southern Manhattan's Lower East Side Little Italy neighborhoods. Meanwhile, during this transition, war broke out between the Morello family, now headed by Nick Terranova, and the violent Neapolitan Camorra, headed by Pellegrino Moreno and Alexandro Valero. During the morello Camorra conflict, Diaguila continued his encroachment on Morello territory, and in September of 1916, Nick Terranova was gunned down near the Navy Street Cafe, further weakening the Morellos. Shortly thereafter, however, both Camorra leaders Valero and Moreno were convicted of murder, along with a number of their subordinates, bringing the morello camorra conflict to an end. This, along with the pending release of Morello bosses Giuseppe Morello and Ignazio Lupo in 1920, made Di Aguila nervous enough to act. The morello Di Aguila War Di Aquila wanted to stifle Morello's comeback and set out to have him and several of his top associates murdered, along with a Di Aquila associate, Umberto Valenti. Di Aquila thought Valenti was becoming too powerful and questioned Valenti's loyalty. Upon hearing of the order, Valenti talked Di Aquila into giving him another chance to prove his loyalty to the boss. Valenti received the contract to kill the Morello leadership, and on May 8, 1922, Valenti and his gunman murdered Morello cousin Vincent Terranova. On that same day, they attempted to kill powerful Morello capo Giuseppe Masseria, but Masseria was able to escape. On May 10, 1922, Valenti and gunman Siglia Tagliagamba ambushed Joe Masseria again. Tagliagamba was shot in the gunfight, but Masseria once again managed to escape. Tagliagamba would later die of his wounds. On August 9, 1922, Valenti once again would attempt to kill Masseria on 2nd Avenue, and after killing both of Masseria's bodyguards, followed him into a local store where Masseria managed to once again escape. It was during his quest to kill Masseria that Valenti began to see a shift in power. Realizing he may never get Masseria, and would himself become a target, 
Valenti set up a meeting to settle the dispute between both gangs. On August 11, 1922, Valenti was the only man to show up for the meeting. Fearing a trap, he turned to run from the area when two men, including a young Salvatore Lucania, who would one day be known as Lucky Luciano, appeared. Valenti dodged bullets as he ran and jumped on the side of a moving taxi where he was eventually gunned down and killed. With Valenti dead, the violence ended and so did much of Diaquila's influence. Several of his closest associates began to defect, including a close friend, Saverio Sam Polacia, who became a personal advisor to Masaria and Moreno. In 1925, Diaquila was forced to retreat from Brooklyn and East New York back to the Bronx. He purchased a home directly across from the main entrance to the Bronx Zoo. On October 13, 1927, Diaquila lost another ally as Joseph Leonardo was murdered. Leonardo was a powerful Cleveland crime boss and was an open supporter of Diaquila in New York. In order to weaken Diaquila, Joe Masseria fanned the flames of contempt already sparking between Leonardo and another powerful Cleveland mobster, Salvatore Black Sam Todaro. Todaro would go on to order the murder of Joe Leonardo and take over the Cleveland family. He would then throw his support behind his old friend, Joe Masseria, who had become the preeminent power in the Morello crime family. The Fall of Salvatore de Aquila and its Aftermath In July 1928, yet another ally, Frankie Yale, was gunned down in the streets. Though Frankie Yale's murder was believed to have been carried out by future Chicago mob heavyweights, Louis Little New York Campagna and Tony Joe Batters Accardo, on the orders of Al Capone, his murder still had a large impact on Tiaguila and his ever more precarious situation in New York. With few allies left, Salvatore Tiaguila now found himself under tremendous pressure from Masseria and Morello. On October 10, 1928, Tiaguila left his home for a doctor's appointment. As he walked down the street, several men approached him. One of the men pulled out a pistol and shot Diaquila two times in the chest. Diaquila fell to the ground where another man fired another seven bullets into his body. The hit is widely thought to have been organized by Diaquila underboss Al Mineo, who was likely given an ultimatum by Maranzano and Morello. Either set up Diaquila or be killed with him. Soon after Diaquila's murder, Mineo was given control of the Diaquila crime family. Al Mineo would swear allegiance to the new boss of bosses, Giuseppe Masseria, and during the years before the famous Castellamari War, Mineo, Steve Ferrigno, and later Frank Scalise would run the remnants of the Aquila family. The Castellamari War between Masseria and rising power Salvatore Maranzano saw casualties on both sides and seemed to be fought to a stalemate until Masseria was betrayed by new underboss Salvatore Lucania, later known as Charlie Lucky Luciano, after which a deal was struck between Luciano and Maranzano. The city would be divided into five families, with Maranzano being named Capo di Tutti Capi, also known as the Boss of Bosses. However, Luciano's treachery would not end there. Salvatore Maranzano would soon after be killed by hitman Red Levine and his squad of killers. They would dress as IRS agents to gain entry into Maranzano's office where they would then execute the mobster on the orders of Luciano. Joseph Bonanno would take the place of Maranzano, thus finalizing what would be known as the Five Families or the Commission. The organization formerly known as the Diaquila family would be put under the control of powerful mobster Vincent Mangano, who along with mafia bosses Joseph Bonanno, Lucky Luciano, Joseph Profaci, and Tommaso Gagliano would become the first members of the commission. The Diaquila family was eventually renamed after future boss Carlo Gambino. 
As the Gambino crime family, the Brigade became one of the most powerful crime syndicates in the history of our country.